In this presentation, you will learn about Western Marxism. All philosophizing in the Soviet Union and its Eastern European satellites began with the framework of 19th century Marxism, which was supplemented by philosophical recommendations from Lenin. However, much of Lenin's thought was focused on more practical problems like violent methods and Communist Party's role in bringing about and strengthening the proletariat revolution. Following classic Marxism, this practical interest was maintained owing to the fact that it preserved the essential Marxist notion of what philosophy is and should be. Marxism, like pragmatism, linked theoretical concerns to practical concerns. It established the fundamental unification of theory and practice by discovering that the former serves the latter. Both Marx and Lenin believed that thought was always an expression of class interest and that philosophy should be converted into an instrument for advancing the class struggle. Philosophy's job was to build the intellectual weapons of the proletariat, not to find the truth in an abstract sense. As a result, the two were inextricably linked. In the West, there were two primary types of Marxism. Orthodox communist parties as described and Western Marxism, which included the more diffuse new left organizations of the late 1950s and 60s. Western Marxism, on the other hand, was a rejection of Marxism-Leninism, even if its proponents thought they were following the Soviet Communist Party's philosophy when it was initially developed in the 1920s. Gorky Lukas, Karl Korsch and Lucian Goldman of Hungary, Antonio Gramsci of Italy, Max Horkimo, Theodor Adorno, Herbert Marcus, and Jürgen Habermas of Germany, and Henry Lefebvre, John Paul Sartre, Maurice Merleau-Ponty of France were all important figures in the development of Western Marxism. Western Marxism was formed mostly by the failure of the Western world's socialist revolution. The philosophical formulations of Marxism, especially in regard to cultural and historical studies, was more important to Western Marxists than the actual political or economic implementation of Marxism. They thought it was vital to investigate and comprehend non-Marxist views as well as all areas of bourgeois culture in order to explain capitalism's undisputed triumph. Marx expected that revolution would first take place in Europe, but the newly decolonized countries of Africa and Asia proved to be more receptive. The technological advancements connected with capitalism were also championed by Orthodox Marxism, who saw them as crucial to the advancement of socialism. However, experience taught Western Marxists that technological advancements did not always cause the crisis envisaged by Marx, nor did they always lead to revolution. They disputed, in particular, Engels' claim that Marxism is an integrated scientific philosophy that can be applied universally to nature. Instead, they saw it as a criticism of human existence rather than an objective general science. Disillusioned with Stalin's terrorism and the Communist Party system's bureaucracy, they campaigned for worker councils to rule instead of professional politicians, believing that this would better serve the interests of the working class. Later, when the working class looked to be too fully integrated into the capitalist system, Western Marxists advocated for stronger anarchist measures. In general, they shared Marxist earlier humanist works rather than later dogmatic interpretations. Western Marxism drew support from academics rather than workers, and Orthodox Marxists dismissed it as unrealistic. Nonetheless, Non-Marxist perceptions of the world have been affected by Western Marxists' focus on Marxist social theory and critical appraisal of Marxist methods and ideas. I hope you now have a better understanding of Western Marxism. Thank you for watching the presentation. Do like, subscribe, share and leave your comments about this presentation or any other topics you would like to learn more about.